The Fallout 4 optimization project, created by Torture, is a set of files and directions about how to use an official Bethesda tool to optimize your game's performance. Lower end systems will benefit from this tremendously, and so will higher end systems in specific game locations. This process will shrink a lot of the vanilla game texture sizes and leave you with almost no noticeable quality difference. Even if you plan to add all kinds of high resolution textures later on, this process will be even more helpful to you as it will help to balance out the extra load that those high res replacers will bring with them. What you have been watching on screen is my personal FPS test on a purely vanilla game, the left side being without the optimized textures and the right side being with. As you can see, at the bottom of the screen, my specs are pretty good for this game and I am still receiving major benefits. Also, note that this process, at least as of now, is not technically compatible with the high resolution DLC as most, if not all, of that DLC will simply overwrite the work done throughout this procedure. Your options here would be to pick and choose a select set of the high res packs for you to use or to simply uninstall the high res packs altogether. If this changes, and you learn about it before I do, inform me so that I can leave an update in the pinned comment at the top of the comment section. Finally, the reason that this process can't just be done for you and the end product uploaded for you to download is because you are dealing with the official Bethesda game files. Uploading them would be a violation of copyright law and the mod would be deleted if nothing else. If you want to optimize your base game files, you are going to have to do it on your own. Torture has provided the additional files and directions, and this will show you how to implement them. Let's get to it. The Fallout 4 Creation Kit comes with a secondary tool called Archive 2 that you will need for this process. A link to a video on how to install a CK as well as how to properly set it up is provided in the description. While the Bethesda Archive Extractor can be used to open archives, of which I have provided a video on how to install and use BAE, it is recommended by the author to only use the official application from the CK for this process to avoid any potential issues. WinRare or 7-Zip will be needed to open the archive that you download. From the Mods page, open Files. Beneath the Only Main Files option, select Download Manually. If at any time you come here and there is a hotfix whose date is newer than the main file, you'll want to download that as well. Since the hotfix provided here is older than the main file, you will want to ignore it, as it's already part of the main file. The archive will download to your system's default location. For ease of instruction, I'm going to place the archive on my desktop. On your desktop, create new folder. Name the folder, Working. Inside Working, create two more new folders. Name them, 1 and 2. Open Folder 2. Drag and drop the top's archive inside. Right-click the archive and extract all of the contents here. The extraction process will take a couple of minutes to complete. Open the All Bugs Fixed top folder. Copy textures, arrow back one window, paste the textures. Delete the All Bugs archive and folder so that only the textures folder is in folder 2. At this point, if you had downloaded a hotfix file, again, making sure that its date was newer than this archive, you would now bring that archive into this folder and repeat the process, overwriting every file from archive 1 if asked to, as a hotfix is essentially updating or adding new files to the original. Navigate to the Fallout 4 game folder. Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Fallout 4. Open the Tools folder. Open the Archive 2 folder. Right-click the Archive 2 executable and send to Desktop to create a shortcut for easier access. Arrow back to the Fallout 4 game folder. Open the Data folder. Sort the folder by the Type column to make this process faster. Locate each and every file that contains the word Textures with the extension .ba2, excluding the high-resolution DLC if you have it. Holding Control as you click on each one to add them to the highlighted group. If you can't see the file extensions, a file extension video is provided. When all of the textures BA2s have been added to the group, right-click on the highlight, select Copy. Still in the data folder, create a new folder. Name it Texture Backups. Open the folder. Paste all of the texture archives that you just copied inside. This will take a little while, but if anything gets messed up throughout this process, you will have a hell of a time re-downloading the files without messing your setup up. By doing this, if anything goes wrong, you can simply drag and drop the backups back into the data folder. When finished, we will be ready to optimize our textures.
On the desktop, launch the Archive 2 application. Select File, select Open. Navigate to the Fallout 4 data folder as we have done previously. Double-click a single texture.ba2 file, any one of them, just remember what it is. From Archive 2, select Archive. Select Extract All To, navigate to your desktop, select the Working folder, select and open Folder 1. Choose Select Folder. Allow Archive 2 a few moments to extract all of the BA2's contents, then close the application. On your desktop, open the Working folder. Click in the blank space to deselect all folders. Hold Shift and right-click in the blank space, and then select Open Command Window here. In the CMD window, type Robocopy. Leave a space. Now back in the Working folder, select and drag and drop Folder 2 into the CMD window, which will auto-enter its file path. Leave another space. Drag Folder 1 into the CMD window, Leave another space. Type backslash S, leave a space, backslash XL, and then push enter. A flood of text will then ensue. Once it concludes, close the CMD window. Now, the textures have been optimized. And with that, we are going to repack them into BA2s and replace the original ones. Launch Archive 2 again. Select File. Select New. Expand the Format dropdown and select DDS. Select OK. At the top of the window, select Archive. Select Add Folder. Navigate back to Folder 1. Highlight Textures. Choose Select Folder. Open the file. Select Save As. Navigate back to the Fallout 4 data folder. Double-click the archive that you originally imported to replace it with the new one that we are creating now. Select Yes at the Save Archive window to replace it. You have just optimized the textures for your first BA2 file. Now, before you continue doing this for each and every textures.ba2 file, as you should, go back inside of the working folder. Open Folder 1. Delete absolutely everything inside. This will prep the folder for the next archive to be optimized. Repeat this process for the rest of the texture archives. If you have all of the DLC, you will need to do this process for each file that you see listed on screen as well. These files are also listed in the pinned comment at the top of the comment section. Instead of saving over the files in the data directory, you could save them to where you store your mod archives and then load them into your mod manager that way. This way, you can leave the original BA2s intact as long as the process went smoothly and even overwrite the high-res DLC since your mod manager takes precedence. Another alternative is to leave the optimized textures as loose files, pack them into an archive, and load them into your game that way. However, this method is not suggested as there are a lot of reports that loose files create extremely long loading screens when there are so many of them. And an unconfirmed report from some AMD users say that their AMD cards get weird textures in-game unless the files are left loose. Again, that's unconfirmed on my part and I don't recommend this route, but the information is provided for you to decide what to do. Once you have completed testing your files, and you should be going in-game to test things once they are finished, and once you have assured that everything is in working order, you can go back into your data folder and delete the texture backups if desired. There's a lot of storage space there being taken up for files that you no longer need. This has been a Gamer Poets tutorial, Fallout 4, Texture Optimization Project. If you felt that the video was too fast, a text version of this tutorial can be found on Nexus. A link to it is in the description. It will be created and updated as time allows. A big thank you to the person in the comments who suggested that I do this tutorial, whose name I can't remember, and I apologize for that. If it wasn't for you, I would never have taken the step to create this tutorial. A huge thank you to Torture, not for only creating this mod and the process, but for reaching back out to me when I contacted him and giving me his support to create this. And of course, a huge thank you to all of you for spending some time with me. As I always say, without you folks, there would be no reason to create these videos, and Gamer Poets wouldn't exist. And that's the show. Thank you again, folks. As always, I am Michael of Gamer Poets. Thank you for watching.